Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make a community request which I was holding out for a long time because I don't I actually don't really know why but now it's the time to do so as you might remember if you follow me on Instagram which you should by the way. I wore this outfit to the Oktoberfest and as you can see from this, this, this picture right here, I always wear the same jacket. <laughs> I always wore the same jacket to the traditional outfit that I had on and you guys wanted to have a pattern for this kind of jacket and I was like that's doable. So here we are. We're going to make a cute Chanel inspired straight jacket, kind of like the one in the pictures. And I'm super excited. So let's actually start with the jacket that I wore. It's this jacket right here. It has a super straight fit. It's made from boucle. It has these white details like the collar, the cuff, and then here a fake pocket and it is lined and apart from that it's just a usual jacket it doesn't have any darts it has a princess seam in the back and just a three-parted bodice in general so it has a back a side piece and a front it has a two-parted sleeve nothing really special here this is a super super easy kind of jacket without any shenanigans. So without further ado, let's get into it. I quickly took off my jacket because I already made a mock-up and this is, uh, I have to explain that once I put it on, but this is like two versions of the mock-up. This arm right here was version number one. And then I redid the left side, for you the right side I think, over here and this is version number two. So what I didn't like about version number one is just the missing width here in the bust area. As you can see here, it's way too far out, like the sleeve begins way too far out. The sleeve doesn't have enough volume, not really volume, but it's not like it doesn't, it's not wide enough. It just looks kind of weird. The shoulder looks set to the back, like it's not perfect. So I went ahead and actually did a fitting on myself and just evaluated what I have to change. It's really hard for me on myself to fit, you know, a sleeve and armhole while having it on. So I just looked at it and, and you know, tried to remember what I need to do, what the changes are, and then just winged it, kind of, and did the changes on the computer and came up with this side over here, which looks so, so much better. So as you can see right here, I added more width in the bust area. The sleeve looks better. It looks a bit set towards the front. It just overall has a nicer shape. The actual shoulder seam is a tiny bit broader. I think like two centimeters actually. It's like a really a big addition that I did there, but it did the trick. Furthermore, the armhole kind of shrank in the sense of it, it it's deeper but more narrow, if that makes sense. The other one was not as steep and wider and therefore it overall looked not okay. But with the same sleeve, it didn't actually change anything on the sleeve. I changed the armhole only. The sleeve was, you know, it had additional length in the sleeve head and I had to fit the sleeve head into the more narrow arms eye and therefore it is kind of puffy up here now. It like has a better shape whereas the other side just like falls down kind of. It just, it's a teeny tiny difference that I did but it makes the shape so much better. So this is the pattern that we're going with now. I, different to the original like inspiration jacket, changed the shape here in the front. I wanted to have a round front here and I will also make the cuff that I want to do that's why the sleeves are kind of short because I'm going to add five centi six centimeters I think cuffs on the end right here and it's going to have like a tiny fold here so this is like folded inwards two centimeters and then from the inside the cuff is gonna come out and it's just going to look nice and detailed this is the back right here as 
I just said just look at this side and not at this side. This one is the correct one. This is what it looks like and I'm super happy with the fit of this jacket right now and I can continue and completely make the pattern. I still have to do the lining and then we can start cutting everything out, putting interfacing on and start sewing. I decided against a pocket or pockets in general because there's just not enough space on the jacket. You can obviously always put pockets on it if you want to. You can just design that yourself. I will skip the pockets. I think it would look funny if you just had like this little bit of a flap here which you can't really use. I don't want to do fake pockets like the ones in the jacket. They're literally that deep. I don't see a point in that and I think it's fine without. I only have my collar and my cuffs out of the silk right here and then everything here is for the corpus which is out of this beautiful boucle. So uh, this is what one side will end up looking like, what parts are going to get sewn together. Now the special thing with this pattern is that we don't have a side seam, we have a side pattern piece. That is kind of in the way of my usual manufacturing technique of leaving the side seam open, but my sleeve has exactly the same patterning basically. So it also has this lower sleeve piece right here and then this piece right here, the upper sleeve piece that is going to get sewn over top there. So what I am trying to tell you guys is that you can leave open either one of the dividing seams here and also that corresponding seam in the sleeve and then you can also just sew the side seam which is the dividing seam technically but it's the same technique I guess which I will be doing as well. So I will be showing that as well. If you don't like that you can also just close the armhole, close all of the dividing seams and close the sleeve seams and then just put the sleeve into the arm's eye. That's totally fine too obviously. So it all depends on how you like to work. I will be starting with putting right sides of the front dividing seam together and then just match everything up, match up the notches and close the seam and then I will be leaving this seam open until we put the sleeves in place and stuff. So let's start with this and continue afterwards. And this is what it looks like. We can go ahead and iron the seam allowance open. Let's continue with the back piece. It has a open center back seam still so let's close that. We're also going to iron the center back seam open. And now we can put the shoulder seams together. So I'm going to put right sides of front and back pieces together to close the shoulder seams. To iron the shoulder seams, I'm going to use my tailor's hem because the back is a tiny bit longer than the front so that it gives a nicer shape. That's why I like to just iron this over top of a round surface. Now we can go ahead and finish the sleeves to put them into the arm's eye here. And I close the front dividing seam, so that's also what I have to close for my sleeves. So these are the two sleeve pieces. You can see where the back of the sleeve is with the two notches. So I have to close the seam, that is the front dividing seam. For your pattern it will also be written on the pattern. This is just my not ready pattern I guess. So we're going to close the front dividing seam on the sleeve. That is the piece. Obviously it's fairly easy now to match these up as we already have the side piece in here. So this one goes on that side. And what I like to do is to have the right side of the corpus in front of me and then I can just match up all of the notches with my sleeve. The dividing seam goes together with the dividing seam in the piece which is right here. And depending on your fabric you might have to gather 
together the sleeve head before you sew the piece in. With my fabric I hope that it's going to be easy enough to just match both pieces together and to just ease it in place but I recommend if you have any thinner fabric or any stiffer fabric than my boucle to gather your sleeve head before you want to sew it into your piece. I will probably cut into my sleeves eye to match them up better and more easily because then the seam just curves a tiny bit better and it just it's just easier to match both pieces up and if anything to ease you know the sleeve head into place a bit easier and then we're going to do the same thing for the back of the sleeve and here it's a bit more extreme but if you do this it should be fine like that and now I'm going to sew the sleeve into the arms eye I like to use my tailor's ham to iron the seam allowance of the shoulder seam into the sleeves. So I like to just put it over top here and then just feel that everything is towards the sleeve. And then I just give it a press. Since the sleeve is not, like it doesn't have too much of a puff, I'm ironing it. If there were any more puff, I would recommend to just steam the sleeve to avoid anything from flattening out. Now that that's ironed, I'm going to close my back dividing seam by just putting everything right sides together. And same as for my usual pieces, I'm going to start from the actual hem sewing towards the sleeve hem as the seam allowance of my shoulder seam and my sleeves eye seam already points in the correct direction. So that's what I'm doing there and I'm going to match everything up while I am pinning. I'm going to iron the back dividing seam as well as everything else open. I'm going to iron the hem up. That's just in preparation for later. It is a four centimeters hem facing attached to the piece. So this is five, four plus one centimeter seam allowance. You need to draw in your sewing line here at the corner and then cut into the corner like just before that marking so that you can fold up your facing so it has like this edge here we're going to attach the facing onto here so uh, that's going to be loose until then Now it's already time to continue with the lining. I have my lining cut out right here. This is the back piece. And as you can see, I already added the stitching lines for the center back fold. I have the smaller one and this bigger one down here. And I'm just going to top stitch it. You can find the stitching lines on the pattern. So just copy that out and transfer it onto your back piece of your lining. I am now going to open my back piece up and the fold that it creates, I'm going to flatten with my iron. And it, this, it doesn't matter where you iron your fold towards, like to what side. And I have a rayon lining here. You can obviously use any kind of lining that you like. Now that the back piece is in place, we don't have to close the front dividing seam at all, which is the same thing for the sleeve itself. So I just merged the pieces in the lining, so we have less work. But in order to sew the front piece onto the back piece, onto the shoulder seam of the back piece, we have to put our front facing here first, which looks like this. It is in the out of fashion fabric and it's going to get attached right here. So I'm just going to put 
right sides together and close the front dividing seam. Also a very, very important step that I uh, skipped over because I forgot only sew until the notch in the facing. There is a notch four centimeters higher than the actual draw edge of the facing, only sew the lining until there. I'm gonna talk about why afterwards because I have to like open stuff up again so that you don't make the same mistake, only until the notch. We're going to iron the seam allowance just where it falls, so into the lining piece. So with both pieces now finished, with both I mean the back and the front lining, we can go ahead and put the back and front shoulder seams together, just like that, putting right sides together of front and back piece, and basically do the same thing from here on out that we did for the corpus of the jacket. We're going to close the shoulder seam, then we're going to put our sleeves into the arm's eye, and then we're closing the back dividing seam. I um, will also iron the seam allowances the same way as for the corpus, and then we're gonna continue and I'll be back. So I'm currently putting my back dividing seam together and I will be treating this basically like any other jacket that is lined and that means that I'm leaving a hole in my sleeve to turn everything right sides out in the very end. So this is my sleeve and I will be sewing from the hem of my lining right here across the underarm seam to somewhere here it's like five centimeters away from the underarm seam and then just back tag and then leave this whole area open probably until somewhere here and then only close this small bit over there just to have this much space to turn everything right sides out the other sleeve will be closed all the way and ironed open and you know manufactured however you always manufacture it but i just wanted to say that and mention that because that is the easiest way to actually close everything inside and out without having to hand sew your hem shut, for example, if you do it like this, because then we can machine sew everything, which is really handy. So that's what I will be doing. I was just thinking what would be the best option for the collar and I think actually the best option is also to just treat the collar as every other collar on jackets and coats and stuff as well. So I'm going to finish the collar on the upper edge and then put it onto my outer piece and then work on putting the lining in which is already finished and good to go. So let's just put this aside for now and take the collar and the collar facing, which is right here. I have the collar facing on the bias and the outer collar lays on fold. So the first thing that I have to do is close the center back seam of the collar facing right here and iron it open so that it doesn't bulk up. And now I'm going to put right sides of the outer and the inner collar together, so like the outer and the facing of the collar together. It's both the same, honestly. Like this, you will see that the facing is a tiny bit smaller than the outer collar. As per usual, if you've seen some of my videos where I'm working with collars already, you know the drill. Or if you've worked with facings before, you also know this. But while sewing, you need to ease both together. So you need to match up the corners and the notches and the center back and so on in order to have the effect that the smaller facing gives us in the very end, which is going to show when ironing because that way the ditch of the seam wants to lay towards the side of the facing and we're not gonna look into a seam anywhere because it's hidden on the inside. So that's really, really neat. And I think that also makes your garments look so much more professional. So that's a tip that I always like to give everybody. Let's sew from here all the way to here. I am going to leave the seam allowance here open. So for you guys, I'm going to draw the stitching corner right here into my piece because we need to still use the seam allowance down here. So this right here, where my needle is, where the cross is, is exactly until where I'm going to stitch. Same goes to the other side, right there. Now 
Now, before turning this inside out, I like to prepare my seam allowances. As you can see, this is a very stark curve. So in order to have this lay flat, I'm going to cut into the seam allowance towards the stitching line every two centimeters or so. This is just gonna help open up the smaller side here where the raw edge is as it's going to lay on this side which is obviously a longer way and here in the front I just like to cut away the curved seam allowance so that it doesn't bubble up once it's turned inside out or right sides out rather like that and as you can see now you can stretch it out to actually a straight line and also over stretch it so now I can turn this right sides out and have the ditch of the seam be visible on the facing side and I like to match this raw edge up because they have to end up being the same length. I don't really like how this looks with the silk because this is such a delicate fabric. I think I am going to cut down the seam allowance so that I don't have these weird edges showing through. If you have any other fabric, you might not need to do this. I think this is very specific to my fabric right here. So very carefully, I'm going to cut this down to around two to three millimeters. For the collar, I'm going to put right sides together of the outer collar and the corpus of my jacket. In the front, I am going to flip down the inner collar, the facing of the collar, to reveal the point where I stopped sewing because that's the point that needs to get attached to the center front notch that is in the jacket. So this is what it looks like. As you can see right here, I just flipped it down and then I'm going to put a needle right in there so that I know that everything is matched up perfectly. And once I'm done with that, I can continue matching up the collar with the rest of the neckline to sew the piece on there. I'm going to iron everything into the collar as per usual. Everything is done the same way as if you have a lapel or any other collar, a fold down collar or something like that. So we're going to iron all of the seam allowances into the collar. To actually be able to iron the seam allowances into the collar, I have to cut towards the stitching line in the center front at the notch. So right there, I'm going to just clip into the seam. That is also going to be needed once we put our lining and facing on there as we need that seam allowance still and then we have to kind of like move into the collar facing seam but we're gonna do that in just a second. Now it's time to actually put the lining onto our front piece right here and that I like to do like this. I put my jacket right sides up and then my lining and facing right sides onto it because especially here in that point as we cut into the seam allowance here once we flip the facing of the collar upwards and like put away all of the other seam allowance that we're not needing at the moment we can just kind of like make this one straight line like this that we then can pair up with the notch in the facing and pin together. That is exactly how we're going to sew over top here. So we want this to be like close together. Everything else needs to be out of the way and then we can sew this together perfectly like this without any gap here at the center front notch. And we're going to sew right where all of the stitching lines ended and where we clipped into the seam right there. The rest is rather easy. We have to ease the two pieces together. The facing is a tiny bit smaller than the outer fabric. Therefore, this front edge here lays a tiny bit more inward. So we have to ease those together. And then the rest is just matching everything up basically. And here where the lining begins, we're also just going to put these together. The lining seam should match up with this point that we marked already just like that now we can continue going over the collar we're going to find our shoulder notch as well match that up with the shoulder seam in our facing and lining this curve is pretty crazy so let's be careful while matching that up And 
and then we're gonna match the center back up and repeat everything on the other side again. And now with all of this prepared, I can go around and sew these pieces together. I'm going to sew from this corner right here all the way to the other side where the same corner is. And we're gonna work on the lining fixed to the hem facing afterwards. Now that that's in place, we can go ahead and cut down the seam allowances here in the center front edge. I'm cutting it down so that it lays flat. Then this bulk right here can also be cut down. I'm only doing the facing side here. I'm gonna see how it folds. If it's not nice, I can always go back and cut away more. Right here in the round edge, I'm going to cut away the facing to about five to three millimeters letting it ease into the one centimeter seam allowance when the curve is over and repeat the same on the other side. Now I'm going to turn everything over. Okay, we can go ahead and iron everything. As per usual, I'd like to have my facing face up while ironing because it's easier for me to get the ditch of the seam to the right spot. I'm going towards the inside now because it's kind of like bulking up here at the center front. And I just need to cut into the center front towards the stitching line at another spot so that all of the seam allowances now lay into the collar. When you sew the lining onto your facing, your front facing, you'll find a notch at the very bottom of the piece, which I apparently ignored. And now I have to take it apart again because that notch marks until where you have to sew. It's four centimeters higher than the actual end of the piece. And that is exactly where the hem of the bodice meets the lining. Because what's going to happen is the lining is going to sit like this and to have everything neat and tidy we're going to have everything folded in this way so what we need to do is find the fold line there are notches in the lining as well I'm going to mark them really quickly I even marked it on my piece like there is a notch there but I completely ignored it I don't know why anyways we have to fold our lining at the fold notch right here so like the the one that's lower upwards like this and now we have to match up the one that sits higher with the one in the facing like that. Let's quickly put a needle in there, only facing and lining. And now comes the a bit tricky part because we're going to add the facing to this equation. This short edge of the facing right here needs to be folded onto the remaining open raw edge of the front facing with the corner that we cut towards matching up with the stitching line of our facing. So one centimeter measured in from here and from here like from the hem and from the dividing seam so from here all the way down to here and this is gonna make a really really nice and tidy finish for the lining and the facing and now when we fold this right sides out again this should look really nice like this so this is a really really nice finish for the lining and facing piece and now the lining already lays correctly for once we attach it to the hem. 
So this is just going to form one continuous line over the whole hem. I think it's the easiest to do the cuff situation first though. So I have the fold of the sleeve hem. We're gonna need that in just a second to put our cuffs in place that are not yet done. So the first thing that we have to do is finish both cuffs, which the easiest I think is to first of all put right sides of facing and outer fabric together like that and just close the actual hemline. So just this line here and for this, this line up here. Leave everything else open because we're gonna close the back dividing sleeve seam once that's in place. So once the cuff is one thing. That's what it looks like. I also understitched the seam so that once it lays like this, it's just a nice clean finish. Now we can put the shorter sides together like this. and fold it over and give it another press, making sure that the ditch of the seam is on the facing side, which the understitching should already do for you basically, like this. And now this edge up here should also kind of match up already, this one, the raw edge. So this is the back. This should therefore sit here. What I will be doing is I'm going to flip around my cuff here because this cuff right here needs to get attached right sides together so i'm turning the facing out basically and when i remove the pins i can basically just match up the back dividing sleeve seam with the cuff to sew it together like that and i'll do the same for the other side and I'm just gonna sew these together at one centimeter. You'll also find a notch in the cuffs that marks the front dividing seam right here. So match that up as well and then sew them together. Now, once we fold this again, right sides out, this, as it's pre-ironed, should fold over the cuff like this and on the inside we're going gonna attach the lining to you so the lining at the sleeves as per usual gets attached from in between the two layers before we do that though we go inside and check if the lining is not twisted in any way and now we're gonna find the notches in the hem and the dividing seams in the hem of the lining to match it up with the corresponding seams in the cuff and the outer sleeve. And now I'm holding this right here and go in between the layers here into the sleeve. And then, so I come out here in between, I grab the seam allowance of the seam in the lining and the seam allowance of the cuff and sleeve right here. These two need to match up once we sew this. And now I pull while holding tightly both or all three layers out because now I know exactly how to match up my seams. This dividing seam goes together here and then we'll find a notch for the other dividing seam at the corresponding spot. Then I match everything up and sew these two pieces together. And of course, I repeat that for the other sleeve as well. So let's sew this. Once done with that, we can go ahead and pull out the sleeve. And now we have the fold that needs to fold over top of the cuff. And basically what the lining is doing is mimicking the same fold on the inside, but it's gonna be loose. Whereas I like to kind of fix this in place because this is gonna be annoying if that just folds outwards all the time. And now the only thing that's left is the hem. And since we have this opening here in the sleeve, we can simply go from there towards the inside and grab the back dividing seam of both the outer and the lining piece and take it out through that hole in the seam allowance. I'm still holding on to it. Let's then pin these seams together. And right here, 
you should find that the lining is already fixed in place with the front dividing seam. So the only thing that you have to do is just continue this, match up the seam for the front side seam or front dividing seam, I think it's called, and work your way towards the other side like this. And now we can close the hem going from right here where the stitches are gonna sew from right where you can see that blue spot all the way to the other side that has the same blue spot. And now once we turn everything through the armhole back right sides out, you can see that the hem is completely closed and it also looks really nice with the front facing corner that we did right here. So let's give this a press. And it looks already really, really nice. So that is what it looks like. So there's just a few things that we have to finish. The first one being the cuff situation. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna do like a top stitch at 1.5 centimeters, which should not be too obvious as the fabric is like pretty crazy. So I think that's what I will be doing. Obviously you can do a hand stitch or you can just sew into the seams here, like a bar tag kind of thing. Same goes to the hem. Instead of hand sewing anything, I'm just going to bar tag in between the seams here. There's a lot of seams, so it should be fine, I guess, so that it doesn't fold down like that. We don't want that. And then for this here, I am going to stitch in the ditch. I will try to match up the seams of the facing collar and the outer collar. That can be a bit tricky, but if you like wiggle around and be very, very neat while pinning both layers together, you can actually get a pretty clean seam, which is what I will be trying to attempt. You can never get it perfect, but to me, it doesn't really matter. I am sewing from the outside so that obviously you're not gonna have any ugly stitching lines from the outside and then if anything does not work out perfectly it's only going to sit on the inside which I am totally fine with. If you don't like any of that you can always just hand sew it. You can also just use bar tags at a few places for example the shoulder seams and the center back seam. That is totally fine too. There are so many different ways of doing it. And now aside from the buttons and the buttonholes obviously we just have to close that big hole in the sleeve and since I already prepared the lining by ironing the seam allowance towards either side of the sleeve, I can just match up that fold line and top stitch right there very closely to the edge. Top stitch this close. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button down below and help me reach my goal of 100k before the end of 2022. It's gonna be a tough one, but I am still hoping. So thank you so much for your support. Also ring the bell so you will get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays and don't forget to like this video if you liked it. In the meantime, you can go and follow me on my socials. The handle is exactly the same as here on my YouTube. The link is also down in the description below. Instagram, Pinterest and YouTube Shorts. Basically that's where I upload. I upload throughout the whole week all about my projects that you see combined here for this video on Sunday. So if you're interested in that, go hit follow there. And the pattern is linked in the description box down below as well as in the pinned comment. So the direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to just go over to my Etsy shop and check it out. And maybe you'll find one or two patterns that you like. That is the best way to support me. So thank you so, so much for that and also for watching, of course, and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye, guys!